Good morning, boys and girls. Today in math, you are going to be measuring items again. So the last two days, you've been using non-standard forms of measurement, like butterflies and items you found in your house. And that's okay sometimes, but you wouldn't want to use that way of measuring things all the time. Why not? Why wouldn't you want to use non-standard forms of measurement all the time? Can you guess? Well, I wouldn't want to use that kind of measurement because my non-standard form might be different than yours. So I might use a pencil to measure with and you might be using a marker. Well, are these the same? Is the marker the same as the pencil? Nope. So our answers would be different, wouldn't they? My answers would be different than yours because I'm using something longer than you're using to measure with. So that's why it's not a good idea to use non-standard all the time. So today you're using a ruler like this. You've already watched a video on how to measure with a ruler correctly, okay? There are certain ways you want to use that ruler when you're measuring so you get a true measurement and it's not off, okay? So sometimes I might be measuring something that has a nice flat top and a nice flat bottom. And that's easy because then I'm going to start at the bottom of the ruler, okay? I always start at the bottom at the zero, which comes right before one, right? Because I can't start at the top. Remember what they said in the video? And I can't start in the middle and I can't go like this. I wanna have whatever object I'm using standing up right next to my ruler, okay? And um, sometimes I like to use a pencil to go like and set at the top of the object that I'm measuring so that I can get a true, I can really see then what it says on the ruler. So when I do this, I see that my marker is about five inches tall. Now on your worksheet, the first worksheet you have today, you are measuring a robot, you are measuring a bowling pin, a lamp, a cob of corn, a unicycle, a broom, a flower, and a bug. And you will notice that the ruler is going up and down, it's vertical. So take your pencil or your straight edge, I call it a straight edge or a pencil, and go ahead and lay it across the top, straight across the top of whatever item you are measuring. And then you can get a true measurement, friends. So I know that the robot is about seven inches tall because my pencil is lying on the seven. I can look too and I can see it's about seven. So then I'm going to write seven right here. Now, you'll notice on your worksheet, and I don't know if I can zoom in here anymore or not, but you'll notice on your worksheet that it already has an I and an N after the number that you write. That tells you that it's inches, boys and girls. You always want to have an IN with a period after it when you're measuring something on a ruler so that you, whoever you're measuring for knows that it's inches. It's not going to be Jolly Ranchers. It's not going to be seven feet. It's not going to be seven miles. It's seven inches. Now, there's another way that you can write inches, and that would be a seven and then like that seven inches but on the worksheet they want you to have the i n today boys and girls as you get older you will be using the inches mark like this but for today you're using i n so go ahead and fill out the measurement worksheet where you are using rulers that are going vertical and then after that you will complete the measurement worksheet where the ruler is going horizontal or across. 
And again, you'll notice that you have the IN behind each number that you're going to write. So the first thing you're measuring is an O or for a boat. So I can see it's a seven, pretty simple, but I like to use my straight edge or my pencil just to be sure, yep, it's seven. So I would write seven here. What a coincidence, the first answer here was seven and the first answer on this sheet is seven, wow. And then you have the bug. So go ahead and he's round, he's got a rounded corner, he's not nice and straight. So you'll want to use your straight edge to see how many inches long that bug is, friends. If you have any questions, give us a call, text us, message us on Dojo, but you should be able to complete those worksheets pretty easy peasy by looking at where that object ends on the ruler. What number does it end on? That's how long it is. And if you notice, they've already positioned the items to start at the zero at the end of the ruler. They're not starting in the middle, but they're starting right at the end, all of them. And all of these are starting at the zero as well. So as we get into measuring with our rulers on our own, then we will want to remember those rules. Thanks, and I will see you later.